follow the tide with the monsters on your shoulder. Remember putting a star next to the ones you like. My intention today is to hopefully be a good listener and also to hopefully give you some structure for the amazing ideas that you have. Story Factory is a creative writing hub for young people. The charity has two centres, including this one in Western Sydney. Since we opened in 2012, we've worked with over 40,000 young people. We saw um, just over 8,000 last year. Young people in disadvantaged contexts in Australia are on average three years behind their more advantaged peers in their literacy and their schooling. So that's a massive gap. But when I stepped through, there was no floor. It costs nearly $3 million a year to run. Regular donors cover a large chunk of it. Perhaps account for about 30% of our income, but it's really the engine of our work because it's often untied funds, so we can use that to do the really important things that, like, you know, keeping the lights on, like paying our rent. PAFs, or private ancillary funds, are charitable trusts which were legislated for 20 years ago to encourage philanthropy. There are two types. A private one, which is your own fund, which comes with administration, or a public one, where your money goes into a pool of donations, but you still get to pick your charities. It's then invested so your fund grows. The tax office ensures you donate a minimum of 4% each year to registered charities. It's tax effective because you get the full deduction for the amount that you donate immediately but then you can spread your donations out over many, many years, supporting classes just like this. The latest data shows just over $10 billion was held in about 3,000 ancillary funds in 2019. They distributed nearly a billion dollars to charities that year. But while the amount of money the funds are giving is rising, the number of new people signing up is falling. Finance industry veteran Chris Cuff made his money in the early 2000s at Colonial First State. He founded a non-for-profit that helps people set up ancillary funds. I think one of the big things is a lot of people just don't know about these types of structures. So I'm on a mission to get the message out there and that, that will help promote philanthropy in Australia. It's minimal hassle, maximum ease of giving and uh, it actually makes it a much more, much more fun experience. Former journalist Leslie Faulkner-Rose has a fund with Australian Philanthropic Services, set up when her father sold his business. When they first put it in, it was about $600,000. I think we're running about $1.5 million now. and We've probably given away somewhere between three quarters of a million and a million dollars. So is it just for rich people? Well, you need about a million dollars to make the private fund work. But some public funds start as low as $20,000. APS's minimum is $50,000. I wouldn't say it's just for rich people, but it's probably people who have, you know, probably own their own house already and are starting to accumulate wealth. For Leslie, it's not about just giving money away. You know, we, we will do our darndest for bushfires and floods, but we may not be so thoughtful about giving money in a way that will help build this country with stronger, stronger institutions, stronger organisations, so that we might be able to tackle systemically some of the tougher problems like housing and education. Making a real difference over a long period of time.